Greetings fellow figure fans, I know it's been a while since I've done the last review again, but I do apologise, but for those who know me personally, there is a lot going on in my personal life right now, I won't go into too much detail because I don't want to, you know, pad out, or go, you know, ramble or anything, I just want this to be about the review, but anyway, today we were reviewing the SH Monster Arts Mecha Kevin from Godzilla vs Kong, I'm sorry, I do apologise, Mecha Godzilla, I just can't help but call him Mecha Kevin, I, I just can't help it, anyway, some back law for the actual character now. Walter Simmons, the numpty that he is, <laughs> founded Apex and decided it would be absolutely great to try and put humanity back on the top of the ladder again. Thanks to Godzilla and obviously the other titans of the world, he thought, you know, humanity's place was tantamount to nothing again. So with the help of um, Ren Sabazawa, he decided to create this monstrosity. All I can really say is dick move. <laughs> For those who have seen the film, I mean, really, come on, who who would think an extraterrestrial entity, let alone its head, yeah, putting anything from an extraterrestrial entity into the body of a mechanized giant is a good idea? Really? I mean, just really? I mean, really? Oh. But anyway, as we know from the events of the film, once this guy finally busts his way uh, out of uh, Apex's base, and entered into combat with Godzilla, he pretty much dominated the fight, and was ready to land the killing kiss of death, uh, before Kong intervened, and together they finally wiped out Mecha Kevin. Although I've got to admit, his durability is really impressive, a lot of plot points were left out, as we know with the movie, a lot of things changed, there was supposed to be this Mega Godzilla, with this weird red armour attachment, that has been, you know, swiftly swept under the rug now you know the original plot has completely been changed as well you know mecha godzilla was supposed to have uh, the yorker device attached to him which was you know another reason um why the plot was so different uh, because he was literally going to masquerade as godzilla he looked more godzilla like so he would have wore the whole fake skin thing um and the reason why no one could work out why godzilla was being so weird and you know attacking different places because it was mecha godzilla but a lot of plot points got changed and obviously the inclusion of the hollow earth and, you know, the other bits and bobs, you know, they got left out, especially when it comes to some of the third and secondary, third and airy, fourth and airy, <laughs> um, creatures of the hollow earth. Uh, they're also cut from production as well. A lot of cryptic stuff going on in the background, for instance, the cut mural uh, that uh, depicts both Kongs and Godzilla's fighting. Uh, a blue-winged Godzilla shooting atomic breath from the sky, um, as well as a cut creature that apparently is only a proto-form of something. Although what that alludes to, only, I suppose, the director could tell us. Uh, but obviously with the inclusion of the Oxygen Destroyer in uh, King of the Monsters, and obviously, you know, Mecha Godzilla and the fact that they've, uh, you know, opened up the Hollow Earth now, so to speak, with all this weird fantastical energy, God knows where the franchise and what they're going to do is going to go. You know, we could uh, come across some weird, you know, Seatopia type thing and you could have something Titanosaurus pop up, for all we know, you know, accompanied by Gigan. Um, but as we know, going on with the franchise, uh, we've got the, you know, Apple TV producing the Monarch TV show. Um, I think Gareth Edwards, um, whether he's producing or directing, I wasn't entirely sure because I can't remember, but they have started shooting in Australia at the moment. Um, for the supposed sequel uh, to Godzilla vs. Kong. Although its running name is Son of Kong, we can only really hold that with a pinch of salt. It's just cool to get the sequel. But obviously, as we know, when it comes to the legendary verse, for a long time we weren't sure whether it was going to continue, but I really hope it does, because I love the direction they've taken. You know, the semi-realism mixed with homages from the past to also bring it up to date with modern-day graphics and technology. I just think it's impressive. I love the new design, you know, the legendary version of Godzilla. I liked how they approached this version of Mecha Godzilla. Even it would have been more intriguing to see the version we didn't get, you know, that had the fake skin, you know, and um, why Godzilla had the weird, you know, red armor parts and things attached to him from the, you know, cancelled figure. Although a lot of people did say that was just like a, an extra figure add-on um, for the Playmates line, uh, so to speak. All the way through the line, the gimmick was battle damage, nothing else, there was no other gimmick, so the fact that, you know, this weird Godzilla that had red armour was cut, does kind of scratch, you know, I am scratching my little beard at the moment, wondering what the hell that was about, especially with the change of plot points and things, um, I, I think the whole idea was maybe he was supposedly remotely, they were remotely siphoning Godzilla's nuclear energy, I don't know, 
uh, to power this guy. Who who knows what it could have been? Only the lots like of only the director will know for sure. But anyway, when it comes to the actual figure itself, boy oh boy, Whew. this is going to be a very hot topic in the community now. I'll cover a few of the issues. Luckily, thankfully, to who I ordered from, uh, which was Karibo. Uh, that's Karibo.co.uk if you wish to visit. Um, I didn't have any issues with mine at all. A lot of people had problems, you know, with parts popping off. The tail was very loose, a bit snapping and breaking. Uh, the pistons on the legs, uh, broken. Stiff arms. I only had the stiff arms issue on mine. And since I originally opened him and had a look at him and put him back in the box, I didn't think I was going to get this guy out again um, until I moved. But I've got him back out, and in doing the video, I've been able to move the arms and put them into a pose. Um, which I think is quite cool. He is quite heavy. He is quite chunky. Um, he's about the same size as Godzilla Earth with a shorter tail, I think, personally. I think he may actually even be a bit taller than Godzilla Earth. Paint job, aesthetically, he's literally just like a, a matte finish, metallic, very movie accurate. There's just a few details and things that I, I think really should have been there. For instance, the detail in the mouth. That There ain't any... <laughs> It would have been nice to see, like, you know, the um, the proton scream uh, cannon lodged in the mouth. Uh, but they did have some extra inclusions. You know, you can pop these out and you've got the missile bays. Uh, you've got missile bays up here on the arms, shoulders that you can pop out too. I said, luckily, my pistons were perfectly fine. A lot of people had issues with their pistons in my tail. While it does feel a little bit wibbly wobbly, it does hold a pose. And I don't really have too many issues. Like I said, the one shoulder, I will admit, does feel very loose. But with time, you know, posing this guy, um, I don't think that would be too much. Like I said, look, see, look, no, it's just very stiff. I'm af almost afraid to, you know, to touch them. So, <laughs> you know, for the review's sake, I'm not really going to go over it too much um, until we get to, obviously, when I... Um, Go over the quality uh, range of motion and whatnot. Forgive me if I'm rambling, but I sort of like I'm catching him in certain parts of light, and he, he just looks good to the eye. But anyway, when it comes to the actual figure itself, Monster Arts did do a quite a job of you know replicating Mecha Kevin's look from the film. It's just like I said, there's a there's just weird aesthetic choices. Um, it kind of makes me wonder whether we're going to get a version two down the line that's going to have you know the accessories like the proton scream and. You know, the red plates going down to the tail uh, and everything. Um, I would definitely say it, it's not bad for what it is. It's just aesthetically, I think they could have done a lot more. Now, I know a lot of people in the community have already started painting the dorsal plates and stuff red and doing other bits and bobs. But you know me, I, I don't really touch mine. Um, I don't really muck around with them too much. But for, shall we say, the powered up, waking up version, um, it's not too bad. I, I like it a lot. It's pretty good for what it is. Uh, it's just aesthetically, like I said, it's just little things that boggle the mind. It's like, why didn't they detail the inside of the mouth a bit better? But I'm quite sure customizers and whatnot out there can probably fix that. Um, I'm probably already going to try and work on maybe a proton screen beam myself um, with some LEDs inside. I'll see if I've got the time to do that. Um, but when it comes to the motion on this guy, kind of a letdown. He's got no torso swivel whatsoever. Because the torso itself is literally die cast. So that's why they put like the missile compartment bays and a few other bits. It's just very, you know, the legs move nicely, but you've got to keep in mind that the pistons may cause an issue down the line. And I know a lot of people have, you know, taken the pistons out of theirs. Uh, there's no individual toe movement. Uh, you can kind of get them to swivel, but... I said I'm not going to stress on mine too much. I'm not going to go, you know, over. You know, I don't really want to break anything. I mean, there is some motion in the neck. It does bend. So literally posing this guy, all the range of motion you kind of need to maneuver him, is kind of going to be out of the legs. I'm finding sort of like a, you know, not too restrictive pose, where you can have the head move around far enough to do what you want it to do. Um, once I get it, you know, mine set up, I'm going to kind of have him grabbing Kong, you know, or maybe, um, you know, stopping a punch or something. 
um, with Godzilla sort of like firing a beam or something in the background. Um, but some of the poses uh, they kind of put in on the box, um, I don't quite know how they've managed some of them, especially with the limit in articulation, especially when it comes to the leg pistons. Um, I'm afraid of them snapping off, personally, as you can kind of see here. I'm just afraid uh, of putting him into that pose because apart from a die cast part, unfortunately the rest of him just really does seem fragile and it's a shame. He's aesthetically, you know, aesthetically nice to look at. It's just, like I said, when it comes to the mouth, why, why do you include that mouth part? But... It does have a nice range of motion. The arms, um, you know, are pretty decent. He's got interchangeable hands. Um, although why they couldn't have just put hinges uh, is a bit meh, I think, personally. But yeah, he's not too bad. Like I said, when it comes to the quality control issues, a lot of people can probably overlook the problems, but I think the piston problem is definitely a big thing. I'm happy I didn't get that issue with mine. Um, you know, and the tail and everything was perfectly fine. Um, but it is one of those things I would have loved more paint applications on this guy. Don't get me wrong, the you know, the metallic paint job he's got on him right now is actually quite nice, but it does seem dull and muted. You know, maybe just an extra something to make it pop, maybe the extra paint along the spines would have been nice. Yeah, the you know, the, the red does go all the way through, but it's just one of those things sometimes minimalist can be you know minimalistic or paint jobs can be better but this doesn't really do mecha kevin any favors personally um and the lack of accessories like i said is just very strange for instance you know they didn't include the drill tail would have been nice maybe to have something you know you could pop off and put on the drill um you know you didn't get no extra screen there's no missile effects or anything um, yeah, the missile bays can pop out, but that's about it. They, you can't plug anything in, um, you know, and there's no gripping hands. I mean, yeah, they're molded, and you do get an interchangeable set that do grip, um, as you can see in the pictures and whatnot. But apart from that, there's not really too much going on with accessories. I kind of feel like they're, they're waiting, and they wanted to see what the reaction was for this version before they, you know, pull a, uh, you know, a version 2 with accessories on us, um, you know, like they did with Gigan. Uh, the Final Wars version, uh, you know, where you get all the sick extra stuff. Uh, maybe they'll do that for this guy, who knows, but it's one of those things we'll see. Uh, personal preference and review on this figure, I would give it probably on the new scale that I'm going to include from now on in all the reviews I do do. Um, I'll go out uh, probably a best out of five mark on this. So when it comes to the paint job, I think it's personally probably about 3 out of 5. They could have done a lot more with it. Articulation, I would definitely say, is a 2. While you can pose the arms, the legs, the tail, the head, the neck, the middle and the waist has got no movement whatsoever, so it kind of just feels like a dead paperweight. But overall, I think for presentation, i will probably give him 4 out of 5. If they would have included some accessories, I think personally it probably would have tipped it. Uh, to more 4.5 or even 5, but the fact of it kind of feels rushed and underfinished and more of a prototype, just like he's in the movie. Um, yeah, I, I just can't give him top marks. Don't get me wrong, it's nice to look at, but uh, yeah, it's just, it just seems off. It just, like I said, the lack of accessories, it just seems rushed. It seems very rushed. And the fact we had to wait so long as well for it, you know, it just seems bittersweet. But it is what it is. Anywho, hope you enjoyed this small little look at Mecha Kevin. But hopefully on the next review I can do for you guys, it will be the special colour version, uh, King Ghidorah. Although I do kind of have to film the how-to video at some point. Um, a fellow guy on YouTube requested... Um, on how to make a Lois Lane uh, for the Hot Toys Superman um, or how to guide. I will get around to that at some point, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, hopefully, I'll see you soon for the next review. Take care.